all this time. <laughs> How was Tucson? Ah, oh, the festival was a bust, if you must know. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong, there was plenty of money to be had, but none of it rubbed off on me, you see. Mm. But, that's enough about me. Tell me, how is this respectable business treating you? This is the place to be, Doc. You can practically pluck the money right out of the trees around here. You said that same thing about Dodge City, White. It's different this time. Through risk of my neck. Strictly on the up and up, Doc. That is until the elections are over. <laughs> You've already heard of my intentions. Well, I can already picture it. White Earth County Sheriff. You, my friend, have not changed well at all. Yeah, well, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Go on. Frank McClowry is on the warpath, Doc. He's gunning for you. He's got it in his head even running your mouth about him and some Benson stagecoach hold up. What if I have? Frank is a no good yellow bellied snake in the grass for rolling over on his friends like that. And all for what? Some blood money from Wells Fargo? I made that deal with Frank, Doc. He was going to get the reward money and I would get the glory. And that would have helped me come election time. Does that make me some snake in the grass? Well, no, Wyatt. You see, you wear a badge and two guns. That makes you a politician. <laughs> Frank has no such excuse. You know a man who would sell out his own friends like that? Well, he's got no business living. I would appreciate it if you mind your own business where this one is concerned. If Frank comes my way, it becomes my business, Wyatt. You of all people know very well that I handle my business the proper way. Doc, we Earps are doing very well here at Tombstone. The Oriental's a gold mine. Virgil's town marshal, and I'm slated to become sheriff next fall. We don't want anything to interfere with that. Very well, Wyatt. I won't be the one to interfere with your little plans. <laughs> that is all I am asking. But enough of this talk. I do believe it's high time you showed me to your best bottle of whiskey. Be my pleasure, Doc, right this way. I hope you're still drinking old Overholt. Well, of course I am, Wyatt. Good thing I've got two full bottles. That's it? Wyatt, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe this, Tom? Throw this out of there like that after spending all that money! <laughs> Trouble we don't need. What I need is another drink. And, and by the looks of you two, I can use one too. Come on. <laughs> Maybe slow down. Don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> don't you think I'll tell you when I've had enough? To quit trying to rope me in, Tom. What's wrong with you? It's not even loaded. <laughs> <laughs> you shooting at me, boy? <laughs> Come on, you're fine. Bartender! Barkeep Whiskey! And I'll run over my toys down here! <laughs> Morgan Earp! Tell me, Morgan, how many Earps you got in town now? Ten? Fifteen? Just five. Plenty enough to keep you boys in line. What's that supposed to be? What do you want? Some hey, we're not here for that! <laughs> Younger! You getting ready to go? Spread more lies about me? <laughs> now, Frank, I do believe I've only ever told the truth about you. You're a drunken fool. What was that? We're here for drinks! Not to worry, Tom. Nothing will come of this, you see. Your brother talks, and he talks, but he never quite backs up any of those threats. No, sir. He is just a coward. <laughs> Better watch yourself, Holiday. Don't make me kill you. I threw your words, Frank. <laughs> you have threatened me. You have threatened these earth boys, and I'm sick of here. <laughs> what do you say we settle this little feud here and now? Fine by me, Holiday. <laughs> Tom, I can't shoot him with my finger. Come on. Cowboy. <laughs> As you can see, I ain't rightly fit for a fight now. If I was, I'd take that gun and show you exactly what I'd do. We do this whole town, family. 
Hicks pal Holiday to the Frank earlier. Again, he's a fool and he's drunk, but he's harmless. He had no call roughing him up. Frank was carrying a gun in town and he was making threats. Lucky he's alive. Who do you think you are? Come down here, tell us how to live. Like some, some John C. Pimp. <laughs> It. I'm done. This is his problem. What his guess. problem? See how dark and the earth's been treating him? He does this everywhere we go. He gets a few drinks in him, and then he thinks he can win his weight in Wildcats. I'm sick of it. That's my brother, Billy. You're not gonna back his play every single time. Why do we keep you around? And what if he's wrong? What if he gets us killed? Get your hands off of me, wife! about Sheriff Behan, Virgil. You see, he's a smart man. Leaves us cowboys alone. <laughs> yeah, Sheriff Behan just might find himself living a nice, long, happy life, too. Like some folks I know. Is <laughs> that so you making threats again? No, Morgan, I don't make threats. When I say men die, they die. I know men like you my entire life. You don't scare me. Stay there. I'm gonna go to Charles Elgin and say it's going to fight you in your whole game. If you hurt my family, I will kill you. <laughs> oh, that is an awful lot of tough talk, Wyatt. Stay there. <laughs> this is shame is coming out of a dead man. <laughs> yeah, you weren't had your chance. You could have walked away. But no, you stayed here in our town trying to run us out. <laughs> Look around you, Wyatt. We're still here. And we ain't leaving neither. But this, <laughs> yeah, this all ends today. I'm done talking. Finally. <laughs> Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Oh. Gonna be, there's gonna be more cowboys here any minute. And they're big guns? Curly Bill or Rico? No, this ain't no, 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 Sir. He gets himself killed, it's just more spoiled than the rest of them. Well, you know, Wyatt, at the rate he's going, that just might happen. He's drunk and he's suspicious, Bird. He knows it's the four of us go about that fence and stage coach hold up. Curly Bill and Ringo find out about that, it is not going to sit well with them. They bury us and bury that secret. Right. This is what we got to do. <laughs> What's going on out here, Wyatt? It's police business, Doc. None of yours. Well, Vertical, there are more cowboys heading into town, and word has it they're coming for you. Seems to me like you could use all the friends you can get. We can find those cowboys just fine on our own, Doc. Well, they're not far from here. In a new lot off Fremont Street behind the OK Corral. They look to be business, boys. They've got guns. Then we will disarm them. Come on. Doc? You're coming with us. You're going to do it my way. I want you to hang back. Hold on to this. Let's go. Get here. 
we deal with them. You don't mean we're gonna kill them? No, no, nothing violent like that, Bill. Go to the epitaph. Put it in a card in the paper. Big fancy border. Of course we're gonna kill them. <laughs> they have to pay for the way they've been treating us. It's a bad idea, we should just clear out. We'll leave when we're done here. Yeah. 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 You cowboys been looking for a fight, well now you've got one. Throw up your hands. Want your gun. Pull us out at once! started. Now two months after this gunfight, Virgil Earp was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Virgil wandered the west until death caught up with him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's brother Morgan. He was shot in the back and killed playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19th, 1882. His brother Wyatt's birthday. Now in 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart. After a lifetime of drinking and smoking, well, tuberculosis caught up with yours truly up in Colorado. Don't care to talk about it. Now Wyatt Earp was the last man standing out of all this. He'd spend his days traveling. He'd make his way from Idaho to Alaska, finally ending up in Jazz Age Hollywood, searching for another tombstone and the chance to get things right again. He never did find it. Wyatt died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday. His final words. Suppose. Suppose. That, folks, was our show. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>